I've had lots of people ask me about how I organize my images and go through them before I get into Capture NX2. So I want to take this opportunity to actually go through the View NX program that Nikon has created. This program is a fantastic program as far as viewing your images. It is not an asset management system, but it allows you to see your hard drive live, which allows you now to go through and actually organize, sort, and get rid of the images that you don't want to have. So what we're going to do here is I'm going to show you a little bit of demonstration about how to work it. First of all, you have different types of views. This is considered the thumbnail view. If you go to the top left underneath the Nikon transfer system, you have the select view mode. Click on that and you can use image viewer or full screen if you want to see the image as full as your screen as possible. I like to use the thumbnail viewer if I'm using lots and lots of images or if I need to see images with a bigger selection to make sure that I got the focus in the right spot I then choose the image viewer. By choosing the image viewer I now have these smaller thumbnails up top with a large individual image down below. I can increase or decrease the size of these thumbnails by dragging the slider of the thumbnail location to the right or to the left giving me small thumbnails but then a really large picture to make sure that my focus fell exactly where I needed to fall. I can also look at the information of the individual image. It tells me all of my standard settings. I can look at the histogram of the image so I can see what's going on. By clicking on the right of the histogram, I can look at the individual RGB histograms. So if you're going to be working with the channels and that inside of uh, Photoshop or other programs that allow you to use channels, then this gives you a representation of where your light is falling with inside of those color channels. And you can also use the brightness histogram, which allows you to see just the overall brightness. It's your choice which one you have. If you don't want to see RGB, you just want to see your brightness histogram all together instead of having all the colors. This is the standard histogram that most people look at. You can also view with fit to screen or fit to square. It allows you to, of course, change the size. I like fit to screen myself. And you can zoom in on it. There's 50%, 100%, 200%, and 400%. In this case, I want to go to 100% to view and see that this image really is not that good of an image. And in this case, since this image is not that good due to the fact of either shaking or wind blowing at the time that I shot it, I'm going to take this image and I'm going to color code it with the one. Now there are a couple ways you can color code images here. Down in the lower left hand corner of the screen you're going to see the color codes that allows you to tag those with those color codings. Or I can just press the one key and now a one appears on the image which for me that signifies that this image is not good. I don't just go through and delete images as I'm going through my pictures. I go through and tag them with certain indicators such as one being not good needs to be deleted but I'm going to do a batch delete versus just a single delete. And then if I like the image I'm going to put a star to it so that allows you to see the stars. So in this case we've got another image. We can go in, look at 100%. Still not that good. So I would label this one as a 1 as well. Let's go to an image now that has better focus and better overall clarity of it. So in this case here, going into 100%, I can see, yep, I like my focus. I like what's falling off with the focus. So now I can take this image, and instead of labeling it with a color, I'm going to label it with a star. I always start off with a 1 star, which means that it's a good enough shot for me to use, but it may not make the cut at the very end. Then I would just continually go through the images, looking at the images to finding out which ones would make the cut. So I could see I, I like the, the isolation of this little yellow flower here. So again, that's going to be the one star. And so now that one star down here is going to be applied to the one star up here. Let's increase our thumbnails just a touch. So now the program is processing that one star. Look over here at the top canopy. Didn't really care for it. This is a view of Salt Lake City. If you've ever been up into the uh, botanical gardens above the University of Utah, this is the view that you'd see over Salt Lake City. So I like this view. So I'm going to label this a one. Just time to do a control control one, which allows me to put the one star there. Now I'm going to keep scrolling through, checking out different pictures. I like the light on this one, how these flowers were shaded a little bit. So again, there's a control one. 
Now I also had some B photographs. Now the pink's a little too much for me. So I actually went over to the red orange flowers. I'm not a flower person, so I really don't know the names of these flowers. But I can look to find out where the best shot is of these flowers with the bee on them. There's a bee hovering right there, and I really like that shot. So I'm going to do control one on that one. And we got closer up to where you can see the bee over here with the pollen on his legs. And so this is where you would now go to have the ability to say, okay, no, I like the, this series. Let's go into 100%. Drag it down so we can find the bee. All right, so we've got that one. And it maintains 100% as you go from image to image, allowing you now the ability to look at multiple images or a couple images with that zoom range so you can see which one you like the best. And I like this one the best. This is definitely the best shot out of the two. So I'm going to control one on that. So now when I've got that done, I have the capability of being able to organize with my stars up here and also with my one. So if I just click on the one, there's all of the ones that I would have had. If I would have had a whole series of them actually gone through this, I'd have a whole series of ones that I would then just select all of them and delete them. As far as working without labels, if you just go back to the check mark, it'll actually take you back to the where there aren't any labels applied. And then there's my one stars. So you can see all of the one stars that I just had applied. So now I can look at these and say, okay, this is great. This is what I want to start working with. Here's the first images that made the cut. Now I have these two images right here. Oh, let's go back to the regular view. These two images right here that I like. Now I can go in here to the quick adjustments option, which allows me now to do some quick adjustments to these. Since they're NEF files, I can do an exposure compensation. I can change my white balance, and I can change my tinting and picture controls. If these were JPEG files, this option would not be available, but I'd still be able to adjust my sharpness, contrast, brightness, highlight protection, shadow protection, delighting, and also color booster. In this case, I want to go to nature. I'm going to increase its color boost so it brings up the colors. You can see it processing right here below the thumbnails. And now you can see the boosting of the color itself. Now with the boost of color, I want to lower down the brightness just a touch. Oh, that's a little too much. So lower it down just a touch. I can change my exposure compensation as well, where I bring that down a little bit to where it's not necessarily affecting brightness, but it's affecting the overall exposure of the image. Now, all you have to do is just press Save, and it will go through and it will save this adjustment of this folder file. And when it does, it will actually create uh, the original image into the original location on your computer. So it'll actually create a separate location of the original image so you never overwrite the original file. Now if you had this image that you're ready to put it to internet or family page, upload it somewhere, then all you would do from here is you go into convert files, choose the size dimension that you want to change it to, choose the location of where you want it to go, and then convert it. This allows you to do quick conversions of images to either to JPEGs, the TIFF 16-bit and 8-bit because I'm shooting with a NEF file here. Also, if I wanted to do a series of images, I could select a whole series of images and apply this same setting to them quickly, therefore eliminating as much of the batch processing that I have to do in Capture NX2. This is really an easy program to start working with. I enjoy working with it. It's a viewer. It allows you to go through and get everything you need to get done. If you'd like to try it out, you can go to NikonUSA.com and download it off their download site and try it for free. It's a simple, easy to use program, doesn't cost anything, and it's the best way to view your NEFs inside of a viewer. My name is Terrence Campbell. Thank you for attending.